morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on when you're watching this. And welcome back to Tech It. And uh, hopefully I'm going to do something fun today. And I'm going to play with a mod that I've never played with before. And that mod is the Big Reactors mod. Now, this Big Reactors mod brings in a load of new power generation options. Uh, a few random things that I've never seen before. And it all looks crazy fun. And I've read some some things. So I've got, I've got a good idea of what I'm doing or how I'm going to start. The first thing I need to do is, because I can't actually build any of the blocks without it, is you need to pulverize some yellow right. You don't need to, but for more efficiency, you pulverize some yellow right, and that'll give you some yellow right dust, which is going to get sucked straight into here. And the yellow right dust, or yellorium dust, sorry, is then uh, put in a redstone furnace, and it becomes yellorium ingots. So I've got plenty of yellorium ingots already, and I also need these graphite bars. So a graphite bar is nothing complicated. You make a graphite bar by just putting some coal in a redstone furnace. I'm also going to need some iron. And I've got plenty more iron over here in this chest. Some iron. I'm also going to need some diamonds, which I made from gold. Some redstone, I believe. And that should allow me to start making some of the, the casings, etc. So we're going to need quite a lot of these casings, which you'll see are graphite bars and yellowworm ingots and iron ingots. You can also use uranium-235, but that seems quite expensive. Now, we're never going to have a shortage of these, really. Let's make a stack of 64. Let's hope that's enough. It's also, they're also part of the other things I need. So we can use, or we can make, uh, I think I need one of those, actually. We need some fuel rods. That's the only going to trigger the reactor. We need a reactor controller. This is the expensivest thing. Um, with a diamond. We need power tap in order to get the power out of our reactor. Where has the oh, right are in there, aren't they? Freak me out for a second. We also need an access port, which is a chest and a piston. So I think we're gonna need two of these. So we need two chests and two pistons. Access port, and we've got the tap. Don't need the computer port, don't need the coolant port yet. We do need the control rod, which again is just a combination of the components we already have. So let's have a look what we've got. So we've got the casing, we've got the power tap, we've got the controller, we've got the fuel rod, access port, we've got the control rod, fuel rod, control rod, and we've got the yellow right, and we've got some power cable. Okay, so we need somewhere safe-ish to build this then. And hopefully, that's where my little side project that you've not seen yet has come into play. I'm still covering over. We have a little building set aside, like, Yog, <laughs> like the Yog Labs building, but this is Gas Labs. So here we have Gas Labs, and in Gas Labs, we're gonna start trying to build this reactor. Now, I've got a tunnel into the base ready, so it's just going to be kept nice and simple for now with a 3x3. I'll look into the more complicated ones after I've um, established whether or not I'm capable of building a safe reactor. Obviously, the last thing I want to happen is for this to explode. So the corners of everything need to be made using the casing. We then need to put the control rod in the middle, the top, and then another piece of casing here. Okay, so that gives us our, our, our structure. So we then need to put the access port, the power tap, and the control rod itself. So the fuel rod needs to go in the middle, because obviously that's where the fuel is going to be powered up. Um, we want the power tap near the side where I'm going to take the power away. So that's lined up perfectly. We're then going to want the access port and a second access port. We need to turn one of these to uh, eject, eject the waste. So put it into outlet mode. So that's going to eject the waste. This is in inlet mode. And that's going to bring in the fuel. And then if we put the controller down, we should get the multi-block. Ta-da! Now we click the controller and we get this lovely complicated interface for us to have a look at. So, 
it does have an internal buffer so we don't have to worry about putting the power cable in line just yet but basically all we need to do now as far as I'm aware is put the yellow right ore in here and it starts to fill with fuel and activate and there we go it starts to heat up and it starts to get a bit hot starting to generate RF. So generate 200 RF a tick. We can grab the control rod at the top and we can tell it to work at 50% efficiency effectively and that will halve the RF and in decrease the amount of fuel that it burns. But we can control it to work out how much fuel that we need effectively and this will start to collect our output as we go. Okay, so it's starting to get, it'll build this internal buffer. So its internal buffer is quite high. It's actually higher than um, the energy cell that I'm going to connect it to. But if we run power cable all the way along under here, we should be able to get into our into our network. So this is currently obviously full eyes the same height, same same amount of RF. So if we wanted to connect it into here. That's going to that, isn't it? So it's going to be a little bit of a mess for now. But we need to connect it into the power network somehow. So I'm guessing we could just, we can go up, can't we? We'll go up and above. We'll sort it all out in the future. So, it's now connected to this. So this is now receiving well more RF than it ever needs. But I could theoretically turn these off now and use these as a backup. Switch that off, that'll stop putting fuel in there. If I then break this, like so, that will stop draining power. Is this then? No, I that press the wrong button. Oh, I'll screw this up by spinning it around, have I? There we go. That's correct now, isn't it? There we go. So if we run upstairs and switch on a few things. So let's grab some ore. Let's maybe take some aluminum and some tin. And we can put some aluminum in there, some tin in there. Uh, anything cool to polarize in there. Basically, with all that going off, we will quickly recharge my top in here. Which will mean this is going to be lacking and wanting 400,000 RF. So that's only going to go up by 40k, which is not massive, but that is absolutely flying along. I'm not even going to be able to get downstairs in time to see if it's actually having any effect, am I? Yeah, so that's dropping down. Or had dropped down. It's dropping down. Ooh, controversial. So if we go down here again to the reactor, 132. So we just put this down to. It's going to up the RF output. Still, not, still on the same four rods, not produce any waste yet. And yeah, there we go. We have a big reactor reactor. How simple and cool is that? So it's quite simple to build actually, and it's very basic form. Now the advantage of these multi-blocks is that there's no real size issues with them so you can make them bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger as your power demands meet or are needed so we can realistically thinking about it eventually have maybe like a 10 by 10 reactor with multiple control rods on the inside 
and then we have to worry about cooling it and we can use multiple any liquid in the game can be used for coolant so like anything from water through to like resin and ender and redstone and these are all things that you could use to power, to cool that and each have different pro properties so i think um redstone is the most effective at cooling but doesn't help you generate as a, a maximum amount of power whereas resin ender will help you generate a maximum amount of power but um causes you to burn more fuel and the, each has its own counteracting pro and con. So once we have um, enough resources to build some tesseracts to get some power through to the other dimensions to power the quarries a bit quicker and more efficiently, and we can really start 64 by 64 quarrying just worlds to death and powering ourselves with a ridiculous amount of resources, then, um, then we'll be set effectively because we can set up the reactor and it will just continue to run and it's going to be brilliant. This has still got power coming through, that's good. So we're still getting some wheat, hopefully. Excellent. We want to build some more of these coercion drivers. Um, and I want to put some more scale modules in because as you saw when I was in the reactor room, um, I really don't want a creeper to be in here. So I've got lights and I've got glowstone blocks to try and make sure nothing can spawn in here, but I'm right at the edge of the range. So I need to make sure that nothing can get in here and keep it nice and safe. And having now built this room and tested the reactor, I realized that the smallest size reactor just fits. When I am going to go to the one I want to build really, which is a 5x5, five five, I think that's going to be the one that, that I want to target. This room isn't isn't going to be big enough for a 5x5, five five, is it? Because it's only one, two, three, it's only four high. So I could dig the reactor two down, I guess. I could go two down here. Um, that would work. So let's have a look at that then. So we can turn this off. Ooh. So let's just remove the fuel. We haven't got any waste. So if we were to break this reactor, the multi you don't have to worry about breaking it. It's not like um, other uh, reactors where you might explode if you do such a thing. You do lose obviously all the fuel you had. So five by five is one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Ah, I've built a, I've built a very terrible room here, haven't I, for this? As far as it goes, that was, that was not really ideal. So how big is this hole? One, two, Height can be the key thing. We can make it high rather than it is wide. So let's build the reactor in the bottom of this pit. Now maybe go and get some reactor glass so we can have a look at the inside of my reactor through a window. Well, that's not anywhere near what I wanted to do. Hmm. I have not, I have not done this well, have I? Let's be honest. My sizing options is not, is not living up to desire. I built the room and then didn't count the number of spaces I had, and so therefore I can't build the reactor that I want to build. Oh well. So how big is this now? I'd ideally like to be able to get on top of it, because then I can play with the control wall, etc. So we'll go for this, shall we? But one space, one, one block around the outside of that side. And then I've run out of blocks. Great fun.
not too difficult to build in the morn, which is ideal for this particular reactor. It's extremely easy early game effectively to build because you don't need much in the way of resources to get it started. And once I've got power, realistically, I can start thinking about ME networks because ME networks are power hungry. And now that I've got power sorted, shouldn't really have a problem with ME networks, should I? Okay. So there's the fuel rods in the center. There's the reactor controller. Got space for more. Um, reactor fuel rods. We can put fuel rods in a sort of a five formation, really. Uh, we'll just put these across here. I'm going to run out again, aren't I? Because I need nine. I've only got eight. Brilliant. Okay. So we'll put the power tap in the same place as ever. Reactor controller. I want to put in last reactor. This. Oh, good. So, uh, oh yeah, I don't need to go anywhere, do I? I have this. Stupid me. Uh, which is good, because what I should have done then is put enough of these, I'd have to do that again, but apparently I'm not clever enough to do that. Tap goes there. Controller can go there. Input and access point can go there. Into outlet mode. Fill in these gaps. And we get a multi-block. It works. Excellent. So we can turn the activate on. We can put 64 of them in there. It takes four of them into there. Producing 300, 300, 400, quite close to 400. That's still on zero, that's good. So we're getting 370 RF a tick now for the slightly larger. Obviously, it's burning milli buckets of the fuel rods per tick, which is much higher. Now, because I've got this much space around it, I could put some water in there to cool it, and that would reduce the temperature that it's running at. I don't know if there's any danger with the temperature of, it, of this particular item exploding, which is why I've built this out here further away um, for now. But what I'm probably going to do is raise the roof of this particular building so I can raise the roof of the reactor a little bit. But we can now connect this very happily. don't even need the energy cell, do I, because it's connected to here. That's taking the power out of there. Rebeautify the floor so that everyone knows what's going on. Like so. And yeah, we have a, a bigger reactor ticking out 368 RF per tick, which is far more than we need. And it's just going to put us in power plus for now. So that's just racing back up again. Obviously, you can receive 200, uh, sorry, 2,000 per tick, but it's not getting close to that yet. Um, so if we grab a bucket and we dump our unneeded resources for now, all of this useless crap that I don't need, we can then. Hopefully, we should be able to use this as an infinite water source. Four, five, six, seven, eight. That should be enough. So we can. So this is currently rocking out at 2005 Celsius. 
if we knock these corners off, jump in the reactor because it's always a safe place to be, and put down some buckets of water. Corner, multi block it up. Yeah, you happy with that now? You uh, seem to continue trying to flow for no apparent reason. Any reason why you're trying to flow still? awkward. Okay. Put some water in now. Oop. Have a get. Jetpack's not quite working in the water. A bit wet apparently. We then finish back off the multi-block. Now we've got water inside. Activate the reactor. And it should now run at a slightly lower temperature. Yep, 2003. So water is the least effective coolant by far because <laughs> it's just reduced our temperature by, oh no, two degrees, three degrees, yeah, three or four degrees, um, which is not not really worth it, is it, let's be honest. But yeah, cool, we're generating 366 RF per tick, which is more than we need. So we can, to save fuel, cut it by 50% efficiency for now. So that'll knock it right down reducing the heat massively, keeping us safe from explosions, but uh, giving us an output of somewhere in the region of about 250, which is good. And yeah, we have power. So there we go. That's what happens when I do this. Ooh, uh, there I am. Here I am, stood in front of my reactor, burning some fuel, making some power. Well, I hope you enjoyed the episode. I hope you're learning something new. Now, there's plenty to play with when it comes to reactors, so I'm probably going to have a play with these in a bit more detail, obviously in the next episode or so. I need to build another Quirken driver and expand the range of my interdiction matrix. But other than that, I think it's been a good and successful episode. And I hope you've enjoyed learning about the big reactors. It looks like something that's going to be great fun to play with and experiment with. Because we have got passive versus active cooled reactors. So this is a passively cooled reactor. Um, an actively cooled reactor is all about generating steam and powering turbines and all sorts of other crazy crap. We can't really do that until we've had this reactor running for a large period of time because the output that we get in here, the um, the dump effectively, is to uh, is what we're going to need to generate the fuel rods and components of the actively cooled reactors. But as long as this doesn't explode, as while well, I experiment with it for the next sort of hour or so, not on offline, um, I look to build a bigger one and move it up to the base, I guess. And yeah, good stuff. I hope you enjoyed the episode, and I will see you again shortly. Bye for now, guys.